Today we've come to Manor Farm Leisure and I'm going to show you how I like to fish shallow with pellet. Now first and foremost is the float that I'll be using today which is a slapper style float. Now it looks like a more traditional float that you'd use for fishing to an island or on the deck. Standard tip, hollow tip, but quite short. Now that's very important when you're shallow fishing because you don't want that line to twist over the tip all the time. Standard oval body with a glass stem. And the beauty of this float is it cocks very quickly so you can fish it relatively shallow and when you're slapping your rig it'll cock straight away so that you're not missing any of them little sharp bites as soon as it hits the water. Um, and this is the float of choice for today so I'll quickly talk you through the rigs that I'm using. Firstly, and this is very important when, you, when you're shallow fishing because then fish can move up and down in the water. So I have two rigs set up that I like to use. One with a length of line that's probably two foot. So that includes your hook length all the way through to your Dacron connector or to your elastic. Now the beauty of this rig is you can have your float very close to your pole tip. It makes it very easy for when you're slapping your rig on the water. You generally use this rig when, you, when the fish are really shallow in the water and they're feeding quite aggressively. The aim with this rig is that when you get a bite, your elastic's just going to come streaming out, so you're not really watching the float tip all the time. Simply set up, I'll fish O13 mainline through to an O11 hook length. Now you can see there that that's a short hook length, it's only four inches long. And then I'll fish a bulk directly above that. Now the reason for fishing a bulk is that you prevent as many ta um, tangles as you can. You don't want to be fishing with a strung bulk when you're slapping the water because the chances are when that's falling through the water and you're constantly slapping it, you will find that you get tangles. The second rig, as you can see, is a lot longer piece of line on it. Now this piece of line is probably three and a half, four foot long. There's two reasons for this. One is, like I said earlier, them fish might not always want to feed high up in the water. Sometimes you'll find as the session goes on, you might have to start deep and then they'll come up shallower as they get more confident and then they can move up and down. That's one thing with shallow fishing. Don't, once you've had a few fish, don't think if, if you stop catching that they've gone. They could literally be six inches below your feed. Another beauty of this rig, again, is that you can move that float down to a foot, two foot, whatever you want but then you have a nice long piece of line between your float and your pole tip now this becomes very effective when those fish are, play, are feeding very finicky and they don't want to come under your pole tip especially on days when you've got bright sunshine and you know it's really flat calm but a lot of them fish when they've been caught a few times will not come directly under your pole tip again standard setup all 13 main line all 11 hook length four inches long and a bulk again Simply move the float up if you want to fish deeper or drag it down if you want to fish slightly shallower. Now, I like to fish a lasso when I'm fishing pellet. Not only does this aid the presentation, it also keeps the pellet on the, on the actual, like the hard pellet on for longer. So I could get three, four, five fish maybe out of one pellet without changing it. And with shallow fishing, especially in a match scenario, it's all about speed. So I'll quickly show you how I attach my pellet to the lasso. So what I have here, I have the two, I have two Corum uh, quick stop needles. You simply slide one in to the lasso, pop the other one in, and then use them as almost like leverage to slide that lasso open. Once you've slid it open, as far as it'll go, Select your hard pellet and simply rotate the line over it, pull it tight so it's as tight as it'll go to that pellet and there you have it. Perfect every single time. Again, this can vary with what baits you're fishing and what type of fish you're trying to catch. With F1s, try and fish a shorter gap between your pellet and your hook as you can. With big carp fishing, it doesn't seem to matter as much, but with F1s, they're very finicky and they'll pick and they'll blow that pellet in and suck it in and out before you've even seen the bite if you have too long a hair. Elastic-wise, you've got your map top kits here, which I, I always use the match kits. I've got here Dacron connector, 
Again, very, very important when you're shallow fishing, especially when you're slapping. I cannot stress how important this is. If you fish it to a knot on your elastic or to a stone flow connector, when you're actually slapping the rig over the top of your pole, your line can become wrapped over the top of your pole. And when you hook your fish, no elastic's going to come out. It'll either break you or it'll break your pole. Very, very important to use a Dacron connector. Secondly, the elastic. Now, when I'm shallow fishing, whether it's summer or autumn or spring, I always like to use soft elastics. So this here is the MAP Hollow um, in a 5 to 8. It's the yellow elastic. Um, and the reason for this is purely because when you hook a fish, I want the fish to be able to swim out of the swim as naturally as possible. I don't want a big bow wave as my pole hits the water when the fish has hooked itself and spooks all the other fish. And then to counteract that, especially when you're fishing in the summer, just fish with a puller bone. So simply, when, you've, when you hook your fish, it can swim out your peg. When you come to net it, just strip your elastic, like so, keep stripping it, and you can pull that elastic as tight as you'll ever need it. So what you might be able to see there is I'll flick four or five pellets in, and then all I'll do is just slap the rig on the surface. Now all this is doing is just imitating bait hitting the water. The reason for doing it is obviously them fish think there's bait going in, and the only pellet that's falling through the water is yours. With the idea being that, obviously, with it being the only pellet, the battle over that one pellet. So you're not having to feed as much bait and overfeed the fish within your peg. Obviously, with shallow fishing, one thing that I will say is the more proactive you are with your fishing, you know, the more the, you slap the water, the more accurate you are with your bait going in, the more often that you feed, little and often is really key. The more that you do that, the more successful you will become at it. You know, it's, there we go, there's a fish on. Now here we go, this is what I was talking about, this soft elastic. That fish is just swimming around, hasn't made a disturbance on the surface. It allows me to pick my catapult up, feed some bait, so that them fish are ready for when I next ship out and ship in. See, there's no, there's no worry of that fish coming off or snapping me. I just ship back nice and gently, break down, and then just start using your puller kit to get it in. All the time, that's tensioning up that elastic. There we go, we've got a nice little left one. Oh, it's cruising. Well, look at that. He really wanted that pellet, it's right down. Lovely little cruising. And like I stated earlier, just clean off the slime from that pellet. You don't want dirty slime on the fish, don't like that. But there we go, that's the third fish I've had on. That pellet's still fine. Get straight back out there, no need to worry about rebaiting. And away we go. And you can't get any quicker than that. Instantly, as soon as you ship out, slap the water three or four times. Let them fish know that there's something there. Again, pick up your catapult straight away and start pinging four and five in. Just keep lifting and dropping that float all the time, even if you get a little dip. Just keep lifting and dropping it. Give it a couple of seconds after you've fed some bait. If you don't get a bite, slap that water again. 